Thank you for that intro, Tanya. Hi, everyone. My name is Isabel Staub. I am a freelance illustrator and artist from Philadelphia. And I just want to say thank you so much for being here with me today. I hope you guys can just relax, grab a snack, draw with me. And I thought for those who don't know my work, I could start out by showing you some of my early stuff and then kind of some of the projects I've been working on lately. So yeah, I'm gonna give a brief presentation, then we're gonna go into how I start my painting, and then I'm gonna show you how I kind of end a painting with all the details and stuff like that. So just like Tanya said, if you have questions, just let me know, because I love answering questions and making this about what you guys wanna know. So yeah, let's get into it. So I wanted to start out with some of my early work. So on the left with the Grace Kelly holding a cheesesteak, that was my first digital painting I ever did with Corel Painter. My professor actually sent this to me recently to just show me how far I've come with my work. And I just thought it's kind of fun to see how far you can come um, over a span of you know almost 10 years. So I went to college in Philadelphia from 2012 to 2016. So this was around 2013, I think, when I first started doing digital work. And this was further along into my college career. I'm getting more comfortable with Corel Painter and kind of finding my style. I was using, you know, bold colors, high contrast that you can kind of see in my work now. So you can kind of, it's fun to see the evolution of your own style and seeing my style kind of grow. And this is some more of my college work. And once I graduated, I was kind of like in this crossroads of what I should do next with my career. I always wanted to pursue freelance illustration, but it was a pretty risky and nerve wracking feat to kind of start from nothing. You don't start with any clients. You don't really like I felt like just such a kid in this big world. It just felt so overwhelming. So I was just in this for about a year. I was kind of confused as to whether I should just get a nine to five and then do art on the side. And I was just in this rut. So when I was in this rut, for about a year, I decided I'm just gonna do a fun project, no strings attached, just post it. So I ended up doing a Disney series and I was posting it to my Instagram. I was drawing the Disney princesses in my own style. And this series really ended up changing my life. It ended up going viral. It was picked up by a bunch of art sharing accounts and then there were articles written about it. And this was definitely the sign and the push that I needed that, okay, this is definitely what I'm meant to do. I love it, I'm having fun. And it was also showing me how much of a role social media has been playing in the art world, especially for illustration. So it was just a lot at once in a good way. And it was the push that I needed. And um, I ended up starting doing commission work for people, finding me on social media. Like Tanya said, she found me from social media. All my clients essentially have found me on social media. So I treat my Instagram almost like a gallery and a portfolio. And it's just so amazing for artists now. I feel like it's given us so many opportunities. So if that's something you guys wanna hear more about, I can also get into a little more in depth about social media and being an artist and all that stuff. Um, just to show you some more of my work for those who don't know me. This is some more of my Disney series. And these are some more fun projects that I got after um, my social media kind of gained a following and I got to work with some companies that I love, just like I've worked with Corel Painter, I worked with Wacom, I worked with Sakura. that was amazing. So it really has opened up so many avenues that I didn't know were possible before. I've gotten some really cool projects like this uh, logo I did for a um, restaurant in London, which was amazing seeing my work internationally and on a billboard it was it's surreal i'm so grateful and i've just been blessed with some really fun opportunities and i worked with caseify uh, this past summer and did my own phone case collection with them which was amazing and also recently i did a variant cover for dynamite comics which was also really cool another project that I took on that I just I feel like I never would have imagined myself doing comic stuff but it just it was so much fun and I love doing it so those are some of the more recent projects that I've done that 
I've gotten through social media and all of that. So this is the piece that I'm going to be showing you guys later, how I finish up with detailing and all that fun stuff. So that was just a little intro of, you know, who I am, what I do, some projects I've worked on. I kind of go all over the place with projects. I just do what excites me. So let's get into how I start my paintings. So I have a sketch here that I kind of quickly sketched out. And I wanted to first show you some of the brushes that I absolutely love and must have. So this one is the Concept Art Jitter Smooth Brush, which is in the chalk pastels and crowns section of the brushes. This brush is my go-to brush start to finish, I feel like. So I will show you. You can make it really big and get some like beautiful, fun textures and layer that. Or you can make it really small, like I did this entire sketch with that brush. So um, I use layers a lot. So over here are my layers. I have the sketch on here, and then on top of that, I have another layer I opened that I will do a cleaner sketch on top. So I'm just going to show you guys some of the techniques I use when I'm starting a piece and. The reason I love digital painting so much is because it allows me to make a lot of mistakes and quickly fix them. I'm kind of a messy painter, so this allows me to have room for error and it's very forgiving. And I'm gonna show you some of the ways that I kind of fix my own mistakes when drawing as well. So I also use when I'm doing my outlines, I use a lot of like warm colors. I try not to ever use black outlines for my work. It can make my painting look really muddy. So I try to keep, if you know my paintings are more warm toned, I'll use this kind of warm brown color, or I'll use, if it's cooler, I'll do like a more blue color, but I try to steer clear of like grays and blacks just to keep the colors saturated because I love my work very saturated. Obviously this is all like personal preference, so if that's not your thing, you can totally ignore that. But I wanna show you how I fix some of my mistakes in Corel. So let's just say um, I don't like where this is placed on the canvas. I will go up here to edit and I will do free transform. And I will just either scale it to a smaller size or whatever size I want, and I'll be able to move it around to a place where I want. So I feel like that's something that I love about digital work. You can manipulate where you put your things on your canvas in a much easier way. And also, you can also lasso specific areas, like say this eye is a little funky. And I will go to edit, free transform. And I will go up here to distort. I use this tool all the time to fix some errors. And I will just kind of pull and manipulate things to, especially I feel like a lot of artists can relate with the eye thing. It's like you get one eye perfect and the other eye is kind of messed up. So I, I'm always, I feel like doing the distort tool on eyes. And I just manipulate that. You hit enter, you know, release the lasso, and then you can have you know, your fixed eye. And so I also wanted to show you how I lay down colors. So I will make my brush bigger. I'll pick a color for skin tone. And obviously I'm gonna add a new layer. So this is not on top of the actual sketch itself. And I'm just going to quickly color over that. And this looks totally crazy, but I'll show you what I do. So I go over to my layers panel over here and see how it's on default. I'm gonna go down to gel. And so this is almost kind of like if you're a traditional painter, like glazing. And you can also change the opacity if you want things a little lighter or a little more subtle. And so my main thing when I'm painting is I think of it as just building layers and layers on top. So this is just my basic layer. I like to just kind of block out the colors that I want. 
And also, I'll show you another layer adjustment I use. So I'll do gel and see how it's kind of dark. And if I want it more closer to the color I picked, I'll go up to colorize. And that'll keep the same value that it was on. It was just change the color of it. So I'll do that with the eyes as well. I'll keep it on colorize. And this is just how I kind of quickly start my paintings. Colorize, add some color to the face. And so I'm constantly using these layer adjustments. While I'm painting, I'll adjust the opacity constantly to make things more subtle. It just gives me a little more control um, to play around with what I think looks best. And I will also kind of block in a background. And I've been using the same brush this whole time. And I'll show you the other brushes that I love using as well, but I just feel like in the beginning, it doesn't really matter too much what brush you use, just because it's, for me, it's a mess like all together. So I just kind of block all of it in. Um, and for the background, I could do gel or I could just, you know, leave it regular. But I will also start putting in my shadows as well using gel. And you can also play with the other, there's so many layer um, adjustments that you can do, like multiply, screen lighten things. So you can add in some highlights with screen. Yeah, I just love, I love playing around with this feature. I feel like it just allows me to just play, which is just my favorite part of digital painting. It's just, and art in general, I just love playing around with things and experimenting and just seeing what works, what doesn't work. And again, I'm going over here and playing with the opacity. I like to lay things down really dark and then I can just kind of toggle it and see what looks best. So that's just kind of how I start a painting and I'll take a little break here and answer some questions. Tanya, if you have any questions that have come in yet, I'll answer those too. Yes, we've got questions coming in. Oh, good. <laughs> So starting with the basics, what kind of tablet are you using, drawing tablet? I am using a Wacom Cintiq, uh, the 13 inch one. And I started, I used the Wacom Intuos tablet, which doesn't have a screen. I use that for probably seven years um, when I first started. And then I upgraded to a Cintiq once I started doing this professionally. That's a very nice tablet to have. <laughs> yes, it's awesome. I love it. Yeah. Um, for those of you that don't know, they have other tablets. They have um, Intuos tablets that cost a little bit less, and they work just as fantastically. Not as nice as just drawing right on the screen, but yeah. <laughs> there, are, there are other options. Um, Robert is wondering, what is the most, oh my gosh, the questions are furiously coming in now. Oh, really? Oh my gosh. <laughs> what, what, well, we'll, we'll get through them. What are the most amount of layers that you've used or how many is too many? Oh yeah. So I try to, as I'm painting, consolidate layers. I always, um, so I'll go up here and I'll select, you know, the layers that I want to collapse and I'll go up here and where is it? I'll do drop all, or there's like a collapse layers. So you can merge those together. Um, I try to keep the layers not crazy because they can definitely get out of hand. Um, if you have to keep things on certain like separate layers, like if you want to keep the background on a separate layer and that, um, I would just try to keep it to a minimum because it can get overwhelming and you get lost, like turning on and off layers. Like I've been there. Um, so I try to keep it like maximum 10 layers for me at all times and just keep like merging and <laughs> collapsing those layers so it doesn't get out of hand. Yeah, it makes sense because when you get too many, then it's even hard to scroll yeah. through. So, yeah, exactly. Um, do you ever sketch on paper and bring that into Painter or are you always working digitally? Yes, I love, I love starting traditionally. I usually just... Most of the time I start digitally just because it's just I'm already here and I'm just like drawing randomly. But I do have drawings that I start traditionally like pencil 
and I'll scan that in and work on top of that, which is another great way. That's how I worked mainly through college was starting traditionally. So that's another great way to start. Okay. Um, could you explain what colorize mode does in the... Yes. Okay. So it's, it's essentially the name. So it really does just like add that color. So if I pick red over here and I'll just give her some rosy cheeks. If I go down to colorize, it'll just add that color on. So if you want to, and it's really good if you want to change color, like see how her eyes are blue right now. If I want them to be green, I'll just go over and unlike uh, gel, because gel will make it, you know, darker because it's kind of multiplying that on top of um, what's already existing. So the colorize doesn't darken. It just adds that specific color on there. Okay. Um, I'm going to say for those of you that are asking questions just about um, her career in general, I'm going to leave those to the end if that's okay so we can get through some of the painter questions now because I know that <laughs> have more to show. I don't want to keep asking questions. Right, right, um, right. This is a good one. So um, initially, before you even started, somebody asked if you use the color harmonies. And Miguel is wondering, do you plan your colors in advance or do they just develop as you go? The color harmonies? I really don't. I, I have such an organic process with how I work. I just kind of feel everything out as I'm going. And like I said, I just play around with things and see if something looks good or not. So it's pretty simple. My process is just really just me being like, that doesn't look good. I'll change it. Um, but if there's a specific, because I go on Pinterest a lot for inspiration. If I see certain colors that I'm like, that's so beautiful, I'll bring those into my painting and try to um, replicate that kind of vibe. But a lot of times it just comes organically for me. Okay, I'm just scanning through the questions here. Okay. Um, and some people are wondering, can you name the layers? Um, do you typically, I mean, right now you're painting live, so. Um, yes, you can name the layers. So if you double click on the layer, it'll come up and you can change the name and just hit okay. And it's super easy. Cause my last project I did um, with a company, I had to have a lot of things on separate layers and I had to name them and keep them organized. So that was very helpful to have all those layers names and keep it clean and organized. Okay, one more, and then I'm going to save some of these questions and let you move on. Okay, awesome, <laughs> awesome. Do you only draw people or do you draw other things? I do draw other things. I feel like I've just like mainly been drawing, especially women that has just kind of been my go-to subject matter recently, all the work that I've been getting. And I feel like my everyone has a favorite thing that they love to draw and I love drawing women and portraiture. I've always been drawn to drawing portraits. So that has always been my favorite thing to draw. Of course, in art school, when I went there for four years, we had to draw a million different things, like still lives and skeletons and all types of things. So I can draw them. I just, I'm, I just love drawing people and especially women. And you have a lot of cute little animals and other things within yeah. your- <laughs> Yeah, I do love drawing animals as well. Yeah. Yeah, I so actually uh, interned for a pet portrait artist when I was in college. So I was drawing dogs and cats for an entire summer. So definitely has a special place in my heart for animals. <laughs> All right, cool. I'm going to, I'll just save some of these questions and let you move on for now. Okay, awesome. So this is essentially how I just started painting and I'm going to move on to how I kind of finish with some detail work. So this is my finished painting, but I just kind of added some blocked in um, layers, which was what it would look like when I'm building up all those things. So I just wanted to show you all kind of some of my process with <clears throat> drawing the really detailed stuff. So when I first started painting, I try to keep myself zoomed out. But the further you get along in a painting, you can zoom in. I don't like being super high up to things unless I'm printing it really big because I feel like when you're drawing an area that's really 
really zoomed up. And when you zoom out, it looks like kind of crazy and different. And so I try to stay further out unless I'm printing it really large. Um, and that's obviously a personal preference, but I just feel like I've gotten my best work from that. So I wanted to show you guys, I know a lot of people ask about highlights and blending. So I wanted to show you some of the ways that I blend while I'm painting. So I will show you, I'll do, take my brush and add a little darker area right here. And I'm gonna do this on a different layer. And I'm gonna go over here, the glazing blending brush is my favorite blender, so it's like my go-to. And when I'm blending, I try not to do like really hard strokes like that. I'll do strokes that go with the grain. So I'm just gonna do light strokes. Because I personally, I don't love like a super airbrushed look. Like I like seeing some paint strokes and all that stuff. So I try to keep the blending not overpowering. And that is one way that I blend. Another way is just taking the detail airbrush. I love this airbrush if I'm going to do that. And I'll go over here and do like a darker area. And then I love, as I've said before, kind of toggling the opacity and just kind of seeing how dark I want the area to be. So I'm, I feel like I'm always using the opacity. I feel like that's like my go-to <laughs> tool just because I love kind of playing around to see what looks good. And then there are also certain brushes on here that do the blending for you. So this is another one that I love, but this is the, so, uh, the fine soft brush um, in the oil section. And I love this, especially for highlights. So I'm gonna take that and it kind of blends for you. So if you just do nice little strokes, it kind of all blends in with the skin in a really nice way. And it also gives you that nice brush stroke as well. So that, that was just a little um, intro on how I blend. And I will also kind of show you when I like my more stark highlights. I use my Concept Art Jitter Smooth brush, which is my favorite brush. And I love this just because this brush has like a nice hard edge. And I'm gonna add nice bright highlight i don't have my highlights super white i'll go a little off white um that's closer to the skin color so it kind of warms up the face and it's not super stark and i will add some highlights just quickly on there and that always brings the painting i feel like to life and i'm going to also show you i get a lot of questions on hair so i'm going to show you how i also quickly paint hair in an efficient way because i feel like hair was something i struggled a lot with back in the day and i feel like i've kind of mastered my own technique of how i get it done quickly so i'll start out with a medium color like this all over and i picture hair kind of as like one why does this keep popping up um as one kind of mass instead of doing string hair like that on a head you kind of look at it all as one form so i'll explain it by showing you so since i have the medium tone i'm going to take a darker version of that color this nice dark burgundy and I'm going to do some, with my Concept Art Jitter Smooth Brush, I'm gonna do some hairline strokes for the shadow. That kind of goes with the form. Since your hair is in a bun and it's pulled back, this is kind of the way. And the hair is so organic, which is like, I feel like you can kind of figure out what shape you're going for. And obviously if you struggle with hair, I, I recommend using reference as well when you first start out. And I'm just gonna add some of those shadows. And the nice thing about this brush is it's very pressure sensitive. So I can go really lightly or I can um, press really hard to get darker colors. So those are my shadows that I have going on. And I'm gonna also do a couple stray in the middle like that connecting. 
And then I'm gonna go up to a lighter color for the highlights. I do this on a separate layer just in case I need to turn the opacity down. And I'm gonna go in the middle where the light will be hitting. And I'm just gonna quickly start adding this in. And this brush I feel like is so great for hair just because it has um, a lot of depth and it gives you almost, it feels like very hair-like. So I'm going to, also I'm gonna zoom out, see how that's looking. And I'm going to turn the opacity down a little bit. I feel like the opacity, you can turn it down. It feels like it melds in a little bit more, which is really nice. And also if you want to do kind of bigger sections with shadows, I like to turn the gel um, setting on and I'll take the detail airbrush and this I like to just kind of go over bigger areas um, if it needs more shadow. And again, this is all just about building those layers on top of each other. And I'm gonna give some highlights to uh, the front pieces as well. Turn my brush size down a little bit. And also I love adding little like stray hairs. I feel like that makes it feel very real and messy. And I just love that look. So, and you can also add some really bright highlights too if you're like addicted to highlights like I am on where the light would be hitting the top. You can make your brush bigger, smaller. I like, I feel like hair is just so organic so you can just like play around with it until it looks right for you. And I will also do this in eyebrows as well. Just add some highlight and a little hair stroke. Yeah, and so I'm gonna move on to eyes as well. I know a lot of people wonder how I do eyes and I'm gonna show you some of my secrets with that. Well, it's not really a secret. I actually am very open with how I do this. So with eyes, for the white part of the eyes, I never do white and I don't do gray. I always go for like a grayish blue. And I will do the white part of the eye is, is kind of like darker blue and it looks a little weird at first because but it all pulls together at the end, I promise. And I like to do a pretty dark ring around the eyes as well, because I just love that contrast. And for the iris and, uh, and the pupil, I don't do black, I do a little off black, so I'll do like a really dark green. Now that really dark, harsh shadow as well. And then I will take a lighter color, like this nice yellow. And I'll just, again, I love this brush for eyes as well. Like this is, as you know, now this is my favorite brush. I do little loopy um, movements to get kind of that pattern in the eye. We can do some parts a little brighter. We'll add some little flecks of brown in there. Okay, you can just play around with that. And then I will take my glazing brush and I'll just do a little soft blending there just to make all those harsh lines go away. And I'm going to do that on the hair as well. We don't need any super harsh lines. So hair like strokes. Just like that, just to make everything look nice and smooth. Unless you want a really like painterly look, you don't have to do as much blending, but I feel like I just keep working until the illustration is super tight. Um, but I'm going to brighten up this eye a little bit as well. I'll use the airbrush tool. I really like using the airbrush just to brighten up like big areas or darken big areas and just kind of quickly go over that 
and I'm going to do a lighter blue as well. And I do the light blue right over this section of the eye. Lastly, the best part is the highlight. So I'll get my Concept Art Jitter brush and I will add a highlight. Again, I don't do a stark white. I'll do like a really, really light blue. And I'll just add that highlight in here. And I feel like you can now see that the blue um, white part of the eye isn't as crazy looking and it really makes the highlights pop. So I love just kind of going in there. It's my favorite part and adding highlights wherever I can. <laughs> and yeah, does anyone have any questions so far? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. good. <laughs> um, so I, I didn't even realize because I have the questions panel popped out, but I see that you have the reference image window there. Right. Um, do you ever use a photo as reference? All the time. I use the reference image. That's up because I use it so frequently. For this, obviously, I'm not using a reference just because it's an old painting of mine, but when I'm doing work for clients, I'm constantly uploading references that I'm using, whether it's I need a reference for a specific type of clothing or a pose or something like that. It's very, very handy for me. Okay, cool. And what about clone painting? Have you ever used that? I I've seen it and I I don't I I pretty keep I keep it pretty basic. I don't use all the like super fancy tools. Um but I have seen it. I I never use it though. Okay, no worries. Yeah. It's I yeah. mean it's a completely different workflow and painter has so many tools. Most people don't use them all. <laughs> yeah, we, exactly. That, that's the thing. It's like there are so many tools. So if you want to use them, they're there for you. Um, I keep it pretty simple, though, as you've seen. So. OK, and I noticed that you were using for the bulk of your painting, the concept art jitter. Smooth. <laughs> yes. And somebody asked a question. What does the jitter do in a brush? It's funny if the name of this brush is Jitter Smooth, which is right. I I feel like the jitter might come. I'll I'll show you when it's like really big. You can kind of see that pattern. It's a little jittery, but I feel like it also can be super smooth. So maybe that's where the name comes from. So that's I yeah. think I I love it so much for the versatility of it. Yeah. So it probably bounces between based on like the pressure that you're using or. Yeah, I don't know. Exactly. I haven't used that brush very much. <laughs> I know. I feel like it's such a random brush, but I've just been so attached to it over the past couple of years that I'm like, I feel like more people need to know about this brush. Um, what about, I can see some texture in your painting here. Do you ever adjust the textures or change paper textures? Yes, I do. So that usually is the last step that I do. Here, I'll show you kind of. Um, let me hide these layers. So I'll show you how I use the surface texture. And you can adjust, you know, how much you want. And I love, I just love texture in a painting. So if I feel like my painting looks too smooth or airbrushy, I'll at the end go in with the surface texture and give it that nice little paper feel and just adjust the amount of it. And it adds a lot of you know, character and a traditional feel to your work. So I love that setting. I love that setting as well. So then when, um, I know that you sell some of your work, um, if somebody was gonna print, once you've added that texture, you would print on smooth paper then, right? Right, I I actually experimented with seeing if that like affects it. Um, I printed, uh one of my pieces that had the surface texture on a texture piece of paper and it really wasn't a crazy look that i thought it would be it looks really good still so i would recommend printing on smooth paper but i feel like it it still worked on texture paper as well which is nice okay and back to the original texture question yes. um do you ever make your own paper textures or i have 
scanned in uh, watercolor paper and stuff and put that in on a layer. And then I will do one of the layer adjustments like gel or multiply and it'll give you that nice texture as well. So if you don't like the like preset things, you can scan in any texture that you want, whether it's fabric or paper or anything like that and see what works for your own art. Okay, great suggestion. Yeah. Um, how do you want me to keep going with questions? Yeah, I don't... sure, go okay. for it. Um, how long does it typically take to complete an illustration? That's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely depends on the illustration. Something like this, where it's pretty straightforward, where it's just one portrait, pretty plain background, um, would probably take me about 10 hours to do total. Um, something more complicated, it can take a really long time just because I get pretty detailed. Um, but yeah, something like this, probably around eight to 10 hours, I would say, start to finish. Okay. okay. And I don't know if you mentioned this, but what document size do you typically work with? Or what oh, do you recommend? Yeah. To people? So definitely before you, if you print your work, definitely think of what size you want to print and then adjust. I try to keep, um, my file sizes to typical print sizes. Like I print a lot of my prints on eight by 10. So I'll do eight by 10 and always 300 DPI or up just because that's the best printing resolution. You don't want it to come out fuzzy. So usually around that size is my go-to. Okay. Um, lots of questions about the Wacom <laughs> tablet and mm. short and do you program your Cintiq with painter shortcuts? I don't program. I, I know a lot of people do. I just haven't. I'm just, I feel like I just like organically just do everything on my own and figure it out. But I feel like I probably should. I definitely should make some shortcuts because I would cut some time out. Um, but I haven't and I've been fine. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Makes sense. I mean, once you're in the, the workflow, it's very easy to exactly. just yeah, use your own shortcuts. And um, oh my gosh. Okay, let me go back to my original list here. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, t when talking about layers, somebody had noticed is the reason that you're able to blend because you have pick up underlying color on? Yes, yes, that is super important, especially with um, when you use a lot of layers. And I'll show you over here how to do that. So where is it? Oh, it's up here. Right up here. Make sure this is um, clicked where it says pick up underlying color because if not, the glaze, I'll show you without it. It's not clicking. Sometimes go to webinar messes with like, I don't know okay. if that's why. Yeah. It, it makes a huge off. difference. Let me just say, just keep that one clicked. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, because then it allows you to blend through the layers instead of just painting exactly. on them. Yeah. Um, somebody else had asked, do you ever use masks? Uh, for like selecting, I definitely yeah. have used that before. Um, I don't use it too often, but it's a great way to select certain areas that are kind of hard to select with just like the magic wand selection tool so it's definitely a handy tool i don't use it too much though but i have used it and it's very helpful now um you i've seen you use the color wheel a lot and you said you don't use harmonies do you ever use the mixer at all i haven't used the mixer um i love that it's there but I have, I, I really, I just, I stick to what I know and what I'm used to. I feel like I just get in the zone. But if you're a traditional painter that's moving to, to digital, I feel like this is such a great way to kind of make that transition into digital. Because it's so like more familiar, you know? Mm -hmm. um, oh, we still have a lot of questions about texture. So people okay. are mean do you ever use like a pre-made texture background i'm thinking you don't i don't think so i yeah. always paint my backgrounds yeah and at the end i'll do the texture on top but i don't really do any like pre-made backgrounds or anything like that and 
I know why when you went to go apply surface texture, I think it only applied to parts of the image and um, that's because things weren't flattened. I th somebody right, had yeah, noticed. You have to flatten, yeah, you have to flatten everything. I had to turn off my layers and then show it on the bottom one just because that's why I always save it to the very end. I can flatten it right before I print and then do that because the surface texture will apply to whatever layer you're on. So it could be just like a little like, you know, highlight that I did or something, which is nice if you just want to add texture to like one certain area. Um, but if you want it over the whole image, it definitely has to be collapsed. Right. Thank you for explaining that. Yes. Um, and the pick up underlying color, <laughs> is it picking up, it's only picking up the colors from the layer underneath it or is it from all the layers? I don't even. I, I'm pretty sure it's from all of the layers together. Okay. Because when okay. I blend, it can, you know, use the background and all that stuff. So, all right. Yeah, like I'll show you right here. It'll do like all the colors together. <clears throat> yeah, that's very helpful. I, I I remember when I first was using it, and I was using some of the blenders, and it wasn't doing the picking up, and I didn't know about that feature. I was so confused, I'm like this isn't blending at all. It's just like white. So it's definitely very important to have that clicked on. <laughs> yeah, important to have that. And just another thing to mention, I see you're using the glazing blender, but we have a lot of artists mentioned that they absolutely love the blending capabilities and painter. Yes, That's there's so many blenders. Um, this is just my go-to one, but I also like the Just Add Water one which is really nice. These are like, there's I love so that many one. options. Yeah, it's very soft and subtle. Okay, yeah, great. I still have more. Um, do you want me to keep asking right now? Yeah, I don't I'll know. Just, like, keep, I'll just keep building up um, this painting and then answer questions as well. Okay, uh, let's see here. Um, in regards of, we know that you're, you're like a social, expert <laughs> do you have any recommendations to other people for trying to capture attention yeah i feel like i can only speak for what has worked for me but i think just being involved in the artist community and you know hyping up other artists and commenting on their posts and reaching out to them and letting them know that you love their work as well um, I just feel like building those connections is really nice, uh, a really nice part of social media, and it helps get yourself out there. It helps other people as well. Like I feel like there's this stigma that artists are kind of very competitive with each other, but I feel like I've experienced the opposite, where we have I found this really nice community where we all lift each other up and support each other, and it's just been um, amazing. And Another thing I recommend with social media is for me, fan art was like a huge, obviously that is like what got me my following was doing my Disney fan art. And if that's something that interests you, there's so many fan art accounts out there that share fan art and like specific art sharing accounts specifically for whatever you're drawing. So, you know, seeking those out and then sharing your art with them. So hopefully they'll share it with their followers all that type of thing so honestly doing your own like kind of like research and figuring out what's popular and what people are interested in i know there's a lot of uh people do like draw this in your style challenges so participating in kind of events like like that are really important and getting being involved and also getting your own art out there as well so i think those would be like my main um pieces of advice just starting out trying to get a following it's very true. When you get involved in that stuff, that's giving you extra exposure as well. And I do find that for the most part, artists are pretty supportive. Um, there's a lot yeah. of painter groups out there. Um, and I should know this, but I was answering questions. So were you <laughs> using the concept art jitter smooth for the hair along with glazing? Which brushes? Yes, I was using, so mainly the concept art brush where I do these like nice little highlights and then I'll take the glazer and I just kind of not over blend, but just kind of blend that into the rest of the hair. So it looks like they're all just like one cohesive piece. 
Um, I try not to over blend because I feel like it can get like kind of crazy and super airbrushy like that. So yeah. I try to keep it at a minimal um, and especially doing kind of like hair like strokes to kind of minimize that and just like make everything blend really nicely. So those are like my two main brushes and I'll use the um, airbrush to kind of like if there's certain areas that I want to like um, do bigger areas like either lighten or darken. Like I'll do for an example, just kind of like lightening bigger areas with the airbrush tool and also try not to go overboard with that. So it's not super airbrushy and like turning the opacity down. So those are, I think the three main brushes I use for hair. Do you ever customize your own brushes? People are wondering, can you make your own brushes? I don't think you can. I mean, you can definitely customize the brushes that are on here. I don't know if you can make your own, but you can definitely change settings with pressure. And um, up here, there's like a bunch of settings that you can change to adjust to make it fit your own style. I really don't change things too much. I keep it, I just really like the original settings. So, I keep it pretty basic and um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you know, really when you're adjusting the stuff on the property bar that is customizing. Yeah. And there are other types of brushes like where you could bring in, you could create your own dab for the brush or right. import an image for a pattern brush or an image host. So yeah, there's all kinds yeah, of- definitely, yeah. You can definitely make it your own for sure. And there's so many brushes. I mean, if you don't like one, you'll find something in here that you'll like absolutely love. Oh, and I also, this is random and not part of the questions, but I wanted to also kind of go over how I do my backgrounds. Um, Cause I like okay. having a really, like fun painterly like background. So I thought that'd be kind of nice to share cause I use some fun brushes for those. So I'll just explain this and we'll go back to answering questions in a second. <laughs> okay, sure. So I love using um, the fine soft brush, which was, I, I was using earlier for highlights. And I'll make that like big. And you can honestly see in the, my actual painting, you can see those brush strokes. So just kind of playing around. I like having a nice little halo of like a lighter color around her head, just to kind of silhouette her. I also love the impressionist brush. I kind of, when I'm painting, I don't want the um subject to be super disconnected from the background so i like kind of melding the two together with brushes like this where it's kind of mixing you know little pieces of uh her into the background and just kind of making it all like one cohesive piece i love the impressionist brush over here it's so fun to play with you can make it really big and just add such like fun patterns and I also, another one I love using is the Loaded Wet Sponge, which can give a really fun texture. So if you don't love the paper texture, you can definitely get texture through your own brushes and just kind of going over, making everything nice and cohesive, just adding some flair and fun things to there. So I love, I love those brushes. Um, and another tip that I've been wanting to share with you guys as well is uh, texture in the skin. So I love using the sprinkle airbrush over here for freckles. And I will go over here and get like a nice brown color. And I used to just do freckles like lightly, like kind of small like this, which looks nice. But when I zoom out, like I can't see them. So I've learned that if I on another layer, I will do, I'll take the lasso tool and I'll lasso around the area that I want freckles. And then I will make the sprinkle airbrush really big. And the reason I did the lasso is so the airbrush doesn't go just like all over the canvas. It's gonna stay in this nice little area that I've made. And I will just kind of lightly go over. So I have bigger freckles that you will be able to see um, from far away. So you can make that super big. And we'll do that selection and then I have some nice freckles so those are just some tips that I've been wanting to share with you and I almost forgot so um if anyone has some other questions or like little tutorials like that that they've been wanting to know how to do just let me know so yeah. are there any more questions 
Well, somebody did ask, and <laughs> this might take a while though, but they were wondering how you draw teeth. Teeth? Yes. <laughs> teeth <laughs> are tricky. It, yeah, if it's too much to go into, because we're- I will definitely do a do and do not. So I'll do a really like quick, like this is gonna be pretty bad, but so I'm gonna show you over here. I'll do like a smile. Um, and we'll give like some lips. And while you're doing this, so many people joined late and I've been getting constant questions is, can we watch this later? Yes. Oh, <laughs> we are recording. So Yay. it takes a while to process, but I'll get it up on YouTube later today for everybody. Okay. So this is so bad, but let's just say this is like, uh, close to finish. So with teeth, I I see this happen all the time where people will like do really stark lines for the teeth just because we're used to teeth being so individual. Um, I really think that makes it look like super scary. So keeping it pretty, um, almost viewing, how I was explaining hair earlier is viewing hair as almost like one mass instead of like a million different individual hairs. It's kind of the same concept with teeth. I would say, you know, if you need to, uh, I would just do like very light lines and if you want just like little indents of like where the teeth are separated, but even like just keep it at a minimal because I feel like the like really harsh lines make things look super cartoony and weird and unnatural. So keeping it almost um, as one shape is important so that would be my quick do and do not with teeth <laughs> with this like terribly drawn mouth so ignore that but yeah that would be my quick tutorial thank you for taking the time to show us that <laughs> you're um, welcome do you teach anywhere and if so where would they go to sign up yeah, so I actually have joined this app called Komi, K-O-M-I, where I do actually individual art lessons with people. Um, you can like schedule that with me or you could go on my Patreon. Um, it's the same as my like Instagram handle, Isabel underscore Staub. I sometimes put tutorials on there if you just want to like watch some tutorials and some behind the scenes of my art kind of similar to this and i also send monthly rewards on there as well so um those are the two places where i would do tutorials and lessons and stuff like that okay great so you guys yeah. know where to go yeah um, i'll also include links to that stuff in the follow-up email that goes out from GoToWebinar. um do you have a youtube channel I do, but I haven't really posted on it. So I don't, I, if that's something people would be interested in, I'd be totally down to like um, post more on there. I do have one, like it exists if you look me up, but I haven't posted on there for like two years. So um, if that's something people would be interested in, I'd be totally down to reignite that. Okay, everybody on here, if <laughs> you're interested, let us know. Um, okay, this is exciting because i think we've gotten through almost all of the questions i have two Yay. um one was do you ever use a sharpen filter once the painting is all done uh i don't i don't think i use a sharpen filter i usually i'll go in at the very end and instead of doing the sharpen filter i'll make a really tiny brush and really just go in there if i want sharp details and just okay. really like sharpen it up uh, manually instead of doing a filter. Cause I feel like sometimes that can like take away and you don't have as much control over it. So um, that would be how I would manually sharpen something. Okay. And the last thing, which this came in earlier, so I don't know if they're still here, but um, <laughs> do you ever post works in progress on social? Yes, I do. Um, I feel like sometimes it's hard for artists to post work in progress because it's like the beginning process of your painting. As you guys saw in the beginning of this, it's kind of a mess. But I feel like sometimes it's important to show that process um, that it takes a long time to build up and it's not an, oh, like a really quick thing to paint. So I do like showing that once in a while saying, hey, this is like where it started and this is where it is now. So, yeah. 
Okay, fantastic. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Isabel. This was really great. Um, now we have everybody saying yes, YouTube, YouTube. Oh. We knew that, we knew that they would say yes. Um, so I will be sure to put your links in the follow-up email that you guys will all get the link to the recording. Um, that'll go out tomorrow morning. It goes out 24 hours after. But you can always go to YouTube forward slash painter tutorials later today if you're just dying to review the replay. So for all of you that <laughs> showed up late, um, you can go there later today. And with that, see, we're at the top of the hour here. Yay. So, <laughs> um, thanks to everybody for joining. Thank you so much, Isabel, for um, this wonderful. Thank you story. so much for having me. And thank you, everyone, for coming to listen and hang out with me. Come over to my Instagram and say hi to me. I love talking to you guys. So, yeah, thank you so much again for having me and being here. I'm, I'm just so, I'm so honored to be here. So, thank you. All right. Well, have a wonderful day, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and close down the webinar now. Bye. All right. Bye. <laughs> See ya.